Taliban executed gay man and then sent the videotape of murder to his family. This summer, the Taliban executed Hamid Saburi, a homosexual man from Kabul, and sent the video of the brutal killing to his mother, causing outrage in Afghanistan. A small LGBT activist group in Afghanistan, known as the Behesht Collective, said that Taliban members kidnapped 22-year-old Hamid around August. Still, the news of his death only reached international media recently. Bahar, a member of the Behesht Collective and also a friend of Saburi, said Saburi was an ambitious yet shy young individual who had a dream to become a doctor before the Taliban came to power after the unexpected departure of the U.S. and combined forces in Afghanistan. Nimat Sadat, an activist who helps homosexual men cross the border into Pakistan, said, quote, the death of Hamad Saburi is further proof that the Taliban will not stop until they eradicate all gay people from Afghanistan. YouTube, this is us reporting, you know, about what other people believe, not what we think. Okay. Since the 2021 Taliban offensive, uh, the attacks upon the queer community have become more frequent. Last year, a gay man using the pseudonym Gabir reported that the Taliban kidnapped and killed his boyfriend. After that, they returned his dismembered limbs and body parts as a warning. Another gay man was burned and tortured by the Taliban last year, and now he is hiding for his safety. Why? Why, why would they send the video of the murder to, the, to his mom? I don't know. I mean, presumably to just cause fear and terror, maybe to shame her for raising a homosexual son or something. I don't. Who knows what goes on in the minds of these sick people? How? I mean, how do you even rationalize that? I don't know. I mean, there's. I mean, I mean the, the execution I mean, videos have been used for various tactics. I mean, ever since the '90s, it really took off with the murder of Daniel Pearl. Okay, but okay, the, the execution part, we like, okay, they're like, that's their sick religion, right? But the, the sending the video to the family part, that's not even in the religion. Like, why do you add that? Like, your religion is horrible enough. Why are you adding on top of it? I don't understand. Like, this is not even Islamic. No. No. These people. <laughs> Swatia is saying is when you're crossing the border to go into Pakistan, something is wrong with your country. A lot of people have to escape and seek refuge via Pakistan. And it's really scary, especially for the Afghan atheists who I've been in contact with, who like have to go then into Pakistan to try to find help for being persecuted for their atheism, where it's also extremely scary to be an atheist in Pakistan. But the thing is, relatively, you are less likely to be murdered for being gay in Pakistan in comparison to Afghanistan. Wow. You know, it's, a, it's about likelihood, right? Yeah, um, when you go, yeah, when you go to Pakistan for protection, then you know, yeah, you're right. You're in a dire situation. I think, I don't know, I was reading about this and there was a man who was interviewed who is an activist who helps you know get these men into pakistan and he was basically saying like given what we're facing in afghanistan um like i can't believe the world is just sitting idly by and letting this happen but what can they do I, that's what i thought if we're being honest for the past 20 years we tried yeah. to intervene and it, I mean, it, it was a horrible intervention, let's be clear. There, I mean, I don't even know how long the list would have been about the ways that intervention could have been better. Yeah, the, the, world, the world largest military power attempted to fix it for many, many years. The majority so of my they, lifetime. Yes. So they literally... They, what else can there be done? If they could not have done it, nobody could have done it. So there's there's that. Like what is, there is no solution to this. This is just a tragedy. Do you think 
because I, I mean, I don't know the answer to this question, but what could the international community be doing to improve the situation? It might not be in, it might not be improving people's rights, but maybe just improving their baseline quality of life. You know what I mean? I think, I think, unfortunately, the solution is to recognize the Taliban. Basically, the same thing that you were called a terror sympathizer for in, in, in Germany, in Cologne. I think, like, people are like, oh, why would you recognize their oppressors? Like, the, right now, the only solution, the Taliban is not going to go anywhere. It doesn't seem like it, at least. The only solution is to get trade going so that maybe economic development at some point will get... Maybe not now, maybe 50 years from now, your countries will come something a little bit better, right? It requires trade. It requires money flowing in. And you're not going to be able to do that without recognizing the Taliban. Unfortunately, that's a hard pill to swallow, but is there any other way? I don't know. Shake. I don't know. Can't somebody invade them, invade them again? Like, well, no. Like, you saw that even after the invasion... Taliban still managed to come back. They were nobody the, the world largest powers multiple were not able to get rid of it, right? Also, so, no absolutely no one has the appetite for direct intervention in that form again. Sergey is saying international sanctions. It's the poorest one of the poorest countries in the world. Like, what are you gonna sanction? The the only like you're gonna make people's lives even more miserable. Like, I don't think that's the solution there. But I was thinking about this recently and in because I was thinking about what happened at Celebrating Descent when I asked that question and then the reaction I got from that Afghani woman, which I have a lot of compassion for genuinely. Because if someone was saying basically what I said, but in the context of Iran, I would be as outraged as she was in that moment. Do you think that's a There's fair a comparison though? No, there's a difference because Afghanistan has hit rock bottom, right? And and we have tried other ways. Do you know what I mean? We have tried everything else. We tried like military intervention. We have tried like you can't sanction your way out of a country that is already there's not there's not much else there to lose at least like with iran okay here's the thing with the iranian regime sanctions might work because they have they have something to lose okay with the with the taliban we're we have we're so close to rock bottom that there's not much to lose other than taliban's power you know the taliban's position like they are they, they, they do not respond to sanctions. They do not care. With, with the Iranian government, sanctions might threaten their position in power. So there's and their something... foreign assets. Yeah, because there's a lot of expense. So with the Iranian regime, them hold maintaining power is very expensive. You know, because they don't have the ideological grip on people that they used to have. So they need to pay people to be able to oppress people. And without the financial support, without the, fi without the financial machine that they have under their control, they will lose grip over their people. With the Taliban, these people are living in cave, like they don't have the same expenses when it came to, they managed to um, maintain a resistance against the United States with very little resources, right? So there's no, Oh, we're gonna take money from away from you so that maybe you disappear. They're not gonna go anywhere. It was already been tried. That's so crazy. I have yeah. a friend who was a medical student in Pakistan, and he said that it was crazy how much when he was doing his residency, the talibs would come in and receive the best, most expensive medical treatment. But he said they smelled like homeless people. Like their hygiene was absolutely abhorrent. It was. I don't know. That was fascinating to me. I was like, holy crap, you had to medically treat Talibs. Oh my God. Um, uh, are there any comments that you want to highlight? 
Do you think Western influence ever made it past the big cities? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, and that's another difference between Afghanistan and Iran. Uh, the demand for a secular democracy in Iran is widespread beyond major cities, right? So not supporting the Iranian regime financially has a higher chance in eventually maybe getting in place a secular democracy because that's what the people want. In Afghanistan, there's people want Islam. You know, I, I know you want, you might get a different impression by looking at university women from Kabul. They're like, no, we don't want this. This is like we've been taken hostage. But let's just be honest, like Afghanistan as a whole, most people they do want Islam to rule over them. So that's why sanctions will not if you remove the top, the, the base is still wants another, you know, the base is the problem. That's why sanctions will not work there. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Can we uh, clap for the next news? Um, this is another wild story about crazy superstitions. I don't know if we should clap because, like, bad things did happen to these people what do you yeah, think wait tro, tro, yeah i won't clap but tro is saying i think afghanistan will sadly remain a mess until it has a free and vehemently secular iran on its doorstep because that will likely hugely influence mindsets in afghanistan i don't know we'll see i mean i don't know because i mean israel is like more secular that it didn't have this, that influence on its neighbor. Turkey was more secular than Iran. Turkey that didn't have that influence on Iran. I don't know if that if that's how things work. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.